بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا أما بعد my dear respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and we ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى during these times of trials and tests that he makes us among those who pass these trials and tests and make us among those who hear and understand and know that these are trials and know for a fact that only by relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, putting our trust in Him, and by doing what we're supposed to do as Muslims, only through those that we could find true happiness in every single thing that we do. My dear brothers and sisters, we have been talking about trials and tribulations in life of prophets and messengers. With the hadith of Sa'id, Ibn Abi Waqas radiallahu an, who reported, he said, I asked, or I said, O Messenger of Allah, which people are tested most severely? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, they are the prophets, then the next best, and then the next best. Reflecting upon this hadith, we understand that those that are tested are the ones that are closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is not just tests and trials that people face, but it is how they reacted to those trials and tests. And of all of the prophets and messengers, if we were to look at each and every one of them, each and every one of them had their own trials and tests. We will not be going through the entire stories of prophets and messengers, but we'll try to understand one lesson from each of them. And to this, this week we will try to do the prophet Idris alayhi salam. Now, there is not much that is mentioned about him. Rather, there are very few verses in the Qur'an and a few hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that speaks about Idris salam, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِدْرِيسِ إِنَّهُ كَانَ صِدِّيقًا نَبِيًّا وَرَفَعْنَاهُ مَكَانًا عَلِيًّا And this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that and mentioned in the book Idris, indeed he was a man of truth and was a prophet. And we raised him to a high station. So from this ayah, we understand that Prophet Idris alayhi salam was a man of truth. He was a trustworthy person. In another verse in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, وَإِسْمَعِيلَ وَإِدْرِيسَ وَذَا الْكِفْلِ كُلٌّ مِّنَ الصَّابِرِينَ and mention Ismail and Idris and the Al-Kif all were of the patient. So we learned that there are a few qualities of Idris alayhi salam that we could all carry with us, especially in our times and in this, especially in this time rather, in the trials and tests that we are going through. The first is the first ayah that I mentioned. It speaks about Idris alayhi salam being someone that we could trust, someone that was trustworthy, a prophet that was Siddiqan Nabiya. He was truthful and he was a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is said in one of the tafsir of Ibn Kathir that Idris alayhi salam was perhaps one of the very first person to write with a pen. Uh, to write with a pen. So we 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 look back and we ponder upon how we could benefit from this prophet that yet not a lot has come to us but there are two main qualities that are mentioned about him a truthful person and a person that was full of patience now patience could take us a very far way a patient person a person that has patience could go a very long way so what is patience patience is the whole oneself from being impatient and displeased okay it's trying to hold the tongue from saying things that it shouldn't be saying and complaining in a way it should not be complaining patience is using the body for the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rather than the displeasure of allah the patience is mentioned many, many times in the Quran and through the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There are many virtues of patience and of the many virtues and benefits of patience is that it was a quality of many of the Prophets of Allah. 
they were very patient people. Now we're looking at our circumstance that we're going through in our trial and our tests, perhaps, you know, the loss of lives, the loss of health, the loss of jobs, and the list goes on. And in the situation that we're currently in, you know, many people are like, when is this going to end? Well, let, let, let's understand, first of all, nothing that we are going through right now is going to be permanent. Everything that happens in this world is the world, the hayat dunya This life is just a very small trial. This life is in an entire test sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are in a testing room as we speak, as we live, as we breathe, we're being tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to understand this, this entire life that we have, it may be 50 years, 60 years, 70, 80 years, how many every years it may be. For some of you listeners, you're probably in your teens and 20. And yes, you may think that you have a long way to go. But in trials like this, it puts things into perspective. There are people who are dying at young age, 15, 16, younger than that, and a lot older than that. And it puts things into perspective to let us know that we are not in full control. Yes, we may desire something. Yes, we may have our goals set. But ultimately, our goals should be that which pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why when we speak about being patient and having the quality of patience in our life is to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with those who are the sabirun, those who are patient. I think this verse gives us a lot of hope. This verse gives us a lot of light in our life that know for a fact in Allah Ma'asabirin that yes, when we're told to have patience, it may seem burdensome over and over and over. You know, you know, you're going to school, you have to be patient with patient with your teachers, you know. You get a lot of homework, you know, make sure you try your best, do good, be patient. Eventually you're gonna get a good job. Whatever happens, you know, sickness, be patient with it, do your part, put your trust in Allah. And it seems like it's gonna be something of burdensome. But how this verse gives us a lot of calmness, a lot of hope, a lot of peace and comfort to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is with those who are patient. So, yes, we are at home. And yes, we have to do this whole stay at home and social distancing. And it seems as though if we turn on the news, they're just talking and talking about it. And it's good to know useful information so that we could benefit from it. But we also have to understand that, yes, this right now is a test. And we should try our best to have patience because patience is a great virtue. And patience will bring about having Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with us. He will, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will shower us with his bounties and blessings once we're doing what is right and having patience in him. You see, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he talks about sabr is illuminating. It brings light. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said this, that sabr, patience, is light. It brings that light into our life. So in times when we may feel that we are stuck and there is nowhere out, well, know for a fact by having this patience, you will find, you will find that patience will bring you to a spot where inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring you all this hope and joy and you will have a better understanding about the purpose of this life. Know for a fact that this life is again short and is a test and also know that it is temporary because nothing right now will last forever only allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's promise is true only allah's promise is true you do your part and allah is going to do his part what is his promise <inaudible> verily those who believe and do the righteous action 
لهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار ذلك الفوز الكبير They will have gardens beneath with river flows We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all with Jannah to Firdaus And those are the ones that are going to be true winners So know for a fact my dear brothers and sisters That having patience takes you a very long way And the opposite by complaining What is complaining going to do? What is he going to do? Is it just going to bring down my morale? Is it just going to bring down my vibe and my attitude? If so, then you need to find another channel, another avenue to bring yourself back into understanding that these tests are all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So going back to Idris alayhi salam, he was said, and it is said by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that he was a prophet إِنَّهُ كَانَ صِدِّيقَ النَّبِيَّ He was a prophet that was trustworthy and he had a lot of patience. كُلُّمْ مِنَ الصَّابِرِينَ He had a lot of patience. And this again, my dear brothers and sisters, this could take us a very, very long way. If we just have this patience, it will take us a very, very long way. And let us think about it. Let us think about it. Those that have patience, okay, in a test, in a trial, you do your part. Make sure you do your part. Just don't sit back and say, you know what, you know, uh, I just put my trust in Allah. What is that trust you're putting in Allah? Putting your trust in Allah means that you're doing your part and you're putting your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to understand, my dear brothers and sisters, that this trials and tests of this life is temporary. And with every difficulty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that with every difficulty, it comes with an ease. Inna ma'al usri yusra. With difficulty comes ease. Not after, with difficulty. And, and think about it. Many times we go through a test, for example, and let's just use the test of universities, for example. You go through your four year college. You pass all your exams and it seemed like the world fell on your head at each one of those exams. You know, you studied, you had sleepless nights. And after those exams, you realize after you have passed all of that and you have gotten your job and you start working, you're like, you know what? Alhamdulillah, I went through that because it gives me a certain way of thinking. It gives me the knowledge I needed. It gives me this and it gives me that. I wish I had done more at that time. Whereas when you were in the actual trial and you were actually in that test, you were like, oh my God, I cannot take anymore. But after you're just like, man, I wish I had some more. I wish I had more. And this is my dear brothers and sisters, something that we could all take with us, whether we're young or old, we could, if we're young, we be patient with our school, with our parents, with every single command that's given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do them to our best. If we're older and we have our children, it is you have patience with them. You know, many people have been laid off and going through a lot of trials and tests right now as we're speaking. And it is for you to have this patience and put your trust in Allah that yes, it is a trial. Yes, it is a test. But let us build on that quality of Idris alayhi salam, of having the sabr of the sabr that Idris alayhi salam have, and by so having being among those that Allah said, "Inna Allaha ma'asabirin." Verily, Allah, verily Allah subhanahu wa taala is with those who are patient. So, my humble advice to myself and to all of you: know for a fact that whatever trial and test we're going to be going through, the prophets and messengers of Allah subhanahu wa taala went through way more than that their tests we could never handle they were prophets they were messengers we are not prophets and messengers we are followers of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam followers of the teachings of the prophet sallallahu we're given the guidance of the quran and this is what we have to carry our lives with it is the instruction manual to our life Islam is a way of life. Don't think about it as some entity that I have to do at a specific time and place. Islam is our life. And that is why my humble advice to myself and to all of you, this is a perfect time to develop your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
developing something called patience because we are all tested with our patience right now especially especially those that are actually have the virus and they're told to quarantine themselves in their own in a room and not to leave you're by yourself and sometimes many thoughts come into your head know for a fact this is a time Allah is blessing us with to connect back to him to reconnect back to him so that we could perhaps cleanse our slate of all the sins that we have committed to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an ibadah is a worship and we could do that in many different ways and my dear brothers and sisters always be someone that is trustworthy no it was a quality of all of the prophets that they were truthful and be among those that are telling the truth especially when you're asked something when you're doing your dealings with your brothers and sisters in your business with your parents with your teachers whatever the case is be among those that are truthful and that will take you a very far away patience and truthfulness are two of the great qualities we learned from idris salam, with all that was going on with him some of the scholars they actually said that in the time of Idris alayhi salam, at the time of Idris alayhi salam, there was not too much idol worshiping. Rather, Idris alayhi salam was pulling his people away from corruption because eventually, once you start accepting sins as being norm, you're going to go away from Allah subhanahu wa taala. So this is uh, the last thing we learn is that once we avoid the sins from the get-go it is easier for us to connect back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we just continue and continue and we feel the guilt and we keep on going and we feel the temptation we keep on going and we end up in the sin yes the first time we may feel oh my god what have I done but if I do not go back and say you know what I need to ask Allah for forgiveness then it only becomes a norm in our life so stop mm -hmm. yourself from making those sins stop yourself from going off and following your temptations and your desires if every single one of us have temptations every single one of us have desires but we are not what our desires are we are what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to be and our purpose in this life is to follow those teachings set by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala follow the teachings of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and so doing having the felicity and happiness in this life and the happiness in the life to come i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you all to bless us all to guide us to what is right to shower us with his mercy we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he grants us patience like the patience of the prophets we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the trustworthy one like how idris alayhi was salam was someone of truth among those that spoke the truth and was trusted we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us away from corruption keep us away from corrupting our own hearts and our own souls we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for all of our sins, to protect us and our families in this trialing moment. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all Jannatul Firdaus. Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzati Amma Yasifun. Wassalamun ala al Mursaneen. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.